Hi, my name is Suchi. Welcome to my free workshop where I will be revealing my top three joint tips in unlocking the artist already within you. The joint tips I will show with you are the same tips that have helped over 10,000 of my students discover and love the artist in them. I have witnessed that the key to learn how to draw is to learn how to see. Steve Jobs, a brilliant designer, said that creativity is just connecting things. When you ask creative people how they did something, they feel a little guilty because they didn't really do it. They just saw some things. When one connects themselves with their inner artist and with what they see, they will create what is in their heart. I love seeing the joy my students have when they reunite with that little artist in them. I still remember teaching my first two students at my dining table 35 years ago. That is where I wish to meet with you today. I hope that as you learn with me, that you will feel as if we were sitting down together looking at your drawings. For this workshop, I have two students helping me today. Their names are Brianna and Scott. I will sit down with each of them and go over their drawings, providing feedback and drawing tips. Let's start with Brianna and end with Scott. Hi, I'm Brianna. Um, I'm a mother of three. Um, I live in the area and um, I'm super new at art, but um, I did take a couple classes, like beginning classes in high school and in university. And I was also blessed to be able to take a few beginning lessons from Suchi. Um, I love to draw and I love art. Um, and I'm happy that Suchi is willing to help me to critique <laughs> some of my drawings that I did earlier today. Yeah, I look at your drawing. Your drawing is actually pretty well. Um, but I do wanted to ask you a few questions. I know having a three children at home and they all like from age one to five, it, it could be very um, busy with their schedule. And will you share with us that the, the time that you get to do some drawing, how does that feel? Yeah, oh, I love, um, I, I haven't been able to do drawing for a while. So when you asked me to do some drawings for today, it was a good excuse to get out the sketchbook again and um, to draw um, some animals, which I really, I love drawing animals. It's my favorite thing to draw mm -hmm. um, and while I was drawing I just felt just relaxed and it was nice to be able to while the kids were taking a nap yeah. just get some <laughs> some drawing in yeah yeah well I was really happy to hear that and that is the purpose of having everyone get back to that little artist once who was living you and let's get on to your drawing today I see some of your drawing earlier was quite impressive um, Thank you. I know you do like panda a lot. I do. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting when you draw panda, your mind just kind of going um, to that zoo or to the memory that when you first see uh, panda. Yeah. Um, tell us a little bit about how you started it. Like what kind of method that you was it be able to apply to it? Yeah. So um, I just started with some basic shapes, like the head is a circle mm -hmm. and the body is more of a rectangle here and, and things like that. And just kind of did the base, basic shapes around. Mm -hmm. And then after that, um, something that I learned from you was how to um, determine the angles. Mm -hmm. So I, di I did a little um, of that, this this method of, mm -hmm. of doing mm -hmm. the angles. Yeah. And once I had the basic shape and the angles in, then I went through and did contour mm -hmm. lines of the, the rest of the panda, panda yeah. and the trees. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, is it helpful with the determined angle that be able to measure it? It's so helpful. Um, before, I don't think I, I could ever draw animals this well before I, I learned that that method. So I'm really grateful yeah, to good. know about good. that. Yeah, I myself, when I first learned that method, I was very excited too, because it just simplify what you see. And um, let's check on some of it, because are you happy with the result or you feel like there's some area you might want it to, like not quite sure if it's, you, you, uh, you know, like, not quite sure how to fix it that I can 
be a good help for you? Yeah, I kind of felt like out of the, I did three animal drawings and out of them, this was the one I was the least confident in. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like there's something off, but like looking back at the picture, I can't quite figure out like what exactly mm -hmm. it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. This um, kind of go in a little bit was the determined tail right here. So you can kind of see this angle, right? Yes. And yours is going down right away. So I was mm -hmm. thought it was the blocking. So if I can, do you see this part right here? You can kind of move out here a little bit more. Let's try that. And then if I need to give you more room, I can do that as well. Good, uh-huh. And a lot of time we are trying to make it to circle because in our mind we know that Penta has it, um, the head is rounded. That's right. good too, but in the same time, it's also important just kind of let that direction go all the way. Because when you do that later on, you can compare this ear to this right here. So if you see this part right here, so it's a tip it. And let's check on your ear right here to here is almost a straight line. If you can see that, right. do you see the difference? Yeah, it's definitely more tilted in the picture. Right. Than it is right in my picture. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I will go ahead and just think about there is. Um, let me see if I can make that line here. See how the angle is not a straight line. It's probably like not three o'clock yet. Just go ahead and make that mark. It's like like that. Yeah, uh-huh. Yeah, Good. it's a lot, a lot different. Uh-huh. Good. And then so you know that this might need to um, raise up a little bit more. And then same thing, instead of doing the curve, I, I see you doing the um, determined angle, so that's <laughs> wonderful. And, and then just kind of do this angle right here, right? Right. Uh-huh. And then you can see and this, right. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. And then the top. Mm hmm It was even a little off with the top. Yeah. yeah. So, so it's more like that shape. Yeah, so I have an eraser here. Eraser is it's a wonderful tool. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I'm there. always so afraid to use the eraser because it's like I spent so much time on this drawing, but it, in the end it will be better. Uh -huh. If I erase <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, right now we just kind of, then you can start looking at this angle here as well, and then you move it to here, right? Yeah, and get the bottom of that ear. Yeah, so you kind of, it's really about relationship, like this line, what is the relationship from here to here, and then yeah. the angle from there. So if you can That's get that, that um, accurate, actually everything will falling apart. Not okay. falling apart, falling <laughs> together. Together, <laughs> together yeah. yeah. So let's go ahead and erase this one, this line yeah. here. It was, uh -huh. and then I have, yeah, there you go. So you can start to see how it is a little bit different yeah. now, right? It looks better even. Yeah. <laughs> so now let's measure the um, the distance from the eyes. Same thing with the okay. eyes, but you got it very good with this angle here, I think. You got it. It's not straight because a lot of time we're thinking the eyes is even, but this is tipping to the left, so it has that little bit angle here. So let's measure the distance from the top of the eyes, and then to here, and then from here to here. Let's see if we can find out something that we can fix. Okay. So like. <laughs> and then I have eye. this um, magic tool here. Not <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> magic wand. Yeah. So you can measure okay. from here to here. And if you don't have it at home, you can just simply using your pencil as well. Okay, so just the top of the eye to the mm -hmm. top of the head. And then from the same spot. Yeah, so it's a very even, right? Yeah. So now let's check on this one right here. From here to here, and then from here to here. Okay. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think his face is too long. Yeah, so there's some part either the eyes need to move down a little bit or, you know, some part right here Something need to be wrong. fixed. And then that the other sense. way you can do is flip this upside down. So when you flip it upside down, you um, your brain, left-hand side of the brain cannot really see. 
I mean, you can still tell it's a pen dot, but it's a little bit tricky. You see the whole thing in a totally different way. So let's look at this right here. Did you see how much this is more space oh, yeah. here? And then from here to here. Is less space. Yeah. So I also see a little bit from here to here. And then do you see that? Yeah. So I did that. And the that. face here mm -hmm. too is so much wider <laughs> than yeah. it is there. Yeah. So upside down really can help us to see it much more clear. Uh, just sometimes we just look at so long. Yeah. And our, our eyes is kind of a little bit um, tired or like kind of couldn't tell. So refresher or sometimes I will put my drawing in front of the mirror to kind of get that look, that, that okay. fresh kind of look. Yeah. That's a great idea. Yeah. I love that. Try that. And you can also uh, look at this angle here too. Oh, this is pretty good. Maybe just a little, a little bit, bit uh -huh. over there. Yeah, good. That's awesome. Well, I hope this helped and um, just continue to practice. The more you practice, um, gauge until, um, or you can practice, the, we're going to talk about negative space next time, that it can really help you. Do you see how this shape oh, right yeah, here? yeah, it's different than yeah, this one. Yeah, right there as well. A little bit mm -hmm. more of an angle there. Right, and then from here to here as well that this is very close yeah. yeah so it's a lot of um correcting and but i feel every time you correct or like you make a difference you see the 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 part that you can actually um, make it better you always always um almost like you having a retainer um like a fixing your teeth and you're like and then to make it more straight. <laughs> yeah. So it hurts because, you know, you spend so much time to do it, but those are good pain. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the result will be beautiful. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the more you do it, then you will become more natural to you to do the measurement and all that. Okay, yeah, yeah that's great. So as Suchi said, my name is Scott and I'm a chiropractor. And one of the things that I've enjoyed from drawing is being able to take scientific things then then still have to apply them so i didn't know until i'd met suchi that there was kind of a technique or uh, order to drawing and how to simplify it and so understanding those concepts of making simple shapes or basic shapes and then turning them into things like a face or a tree uh, it was kind of exciting to me Good. well i see that you picking portrait uh, for today's critique, and it, it makes sense to me that as a chiropractor that you care about people and you always want to know the well-being of that person, so of course you will pick a person, mm. yeah. So that's, um, look at your drawing, what you happy about and what you not quite happy about, or like what you bothers you, yeah. Okay. So I like history a lot, and so this is an actor from the 1950s. And um, what I like about it is I think I can tell who it is, so there's a resemblance, so I'm happy about that. Because when I first started drawing, everything was very uh, cartoonish and uh, angular with a lot of straight lines. Um, but I don't feel like I'm very good at proportions yet and also shading, so finding the shadows so that things don't look so flat, but they look rounded mm -hmm. in the picture. Good, well, I think you did a lot of things that is coming together. You know, you do check your angle, even though it could be better, but at least that is a good start. And let's talk about the proportion. Proportion, it is not something you can fix in one day. It does take practice and experience. So let's check the proportion um, from the hairline to the eyebrows line, that is uh, one. I'm gonna draw on your paper, is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> so let's check um, back to the, the angle. So that eyebrow line, if you move that from here to here, it, it could be, be a little bit higher. higher. Uh huh. And if you see the center line of our face is coming from the middle right here. So you can tell, do you see this angle right here? Mm -hmm. Do you see how off that is? Mm. Yeah, so let's see if our 
poker it can help us a little bit right here. see about right there. Okay. So if you've had that, um, even this is a little bit more tipped at here too, like this, then you can kind of see that should be moving to that direction. Mm -hmm. And it is very, um, you can say it's frustrating that your left hand side of brain, meaning that more logical side of brain, is try to give you a message that, oh yeah, the eyes should be the same, um, and then the mouth and the lips should all lined up. But now we are looking at the quarter view, so it should be shift a little bit. And it's very easy to, um, sometimes we kind of go back to that logical way of thinking. So that's okay though, do take, um, take um, credit for what you already have done rather than frustrated with what have not yet mm. um, be able to finish. Okay, let's look at um, another thing is um, you say that the shading sometimes is a frustrating little bit for you too. Yeah. Yeah, so when we do the shading, we want to look at as a whole, meaning that um, say you look at the box as like a uh, the face almost like a box right here. So you have a different plane. So the plane right here now is light and this side is dark, but our lighting, our light is here. So I think the viewer are gonna see this is light and here is dark. But mm. thinking about this side is dark and then this side is um, light. I'm, again, I'm gonna use this to help us to understand a little bit. Oh, it's kind of off right here. You can see here's a box right here, right? Mm -hmm. So when you wanted to um, start doing the shading, you need to think about two value statement, meaning this size will be darker, right? Yep, I see that. So, and you are doing that as well, but again, the angle is a little bit off, right? It should be more tipped to this way. Mm. If you move this to here, and the same thing that this part right here. So those are uh, very general, like you wanted to get the angles right. And the next thing you wanted to do is to think about the eyes. As, even though we're thinking the eyes should be, um, should be lighter, especially like right here, but the whole socket of the eyes is under the scope. So this size right here, I would generally just shade it dark because that is cause the shadow because it's in rather than sticking out. Mm. And then also the bottom of the nose, this part right here is also darker. darker. And then the upper lips is also darker here. You can see this side had to be darker mm. and then lighter here on the lips because the lip is, bottom lip is sticking out. And then the, underneath the shadow, you can see this is darker again. The chin is also sticking out and then darker. So you have a pattern of dark, light, dark, light, and then dark. This is a little bit lighter, but we have a cast shadow here. So it's kind of causes all shadow here. So it's darker, lighter. The keystone also is a little bit darker and then light. So that is a pattern that we can follow as well. Um, we didn't talk about the proportion, continue, so from here to here, and then from here to here, from the eyebrow to the bottom nose, and from the bottom nose to the chin, it should be an equal distance. So let's check on yours, here's one. That's really good right there, right, very close. Mm -hmm. um, the nose is a little bit too long, I think, because from here to here, it should be about almost the same distance. Do you see that? Yeah. And then from here to here, um, that will be the same distance as well. So if you kind of move the nose just higher a little bit, that part from here could be a little bit easier um, 
to see the the distance from the nose to the upper lips because right now it you seems like very it. yeah uh-huh. mm. okay so try those two parts you know look at the big shadow first rather than jump right in to try to figure out um, where the shadow is so the general shadow meaning um, the plane you know right here so I think that will help to uh, look at the portrait as a whole view too. And the other thing I do wanted to mention is a lot of time we're looking at the photograph and it's very really easy for us to try to copy exactly what the photo look like and then to the paper. But a lot of time as an artist, we need to kind of pick and choose what is more important. Um, when we look at people's face, we don't just look at um, the eyes directly, we'll look at the whole thing, meaning that we are looking at light and dark. I do have some photo that I uh, prepared that I want to share with you about others' uh, drawings. So you can see right here, there's not eyes, nose, or mouth that are very clear, very well, illustrated, but what you see is just light and dark, right? And But you get a feel of that person. Mm -hmm. And so when you do the portrait, uh, it is important to um, measure the angle, measure the proportion, but the most important is to see that light and dark, to see that person's um, um, almost like the inner thought that comes out, like that emotion. Now this one is another example of the portrait. You can see this artist here is trying very hard to make it more um, accurate, like to see it more what eyes should be look like, what nose should be look like. And sometimes it is good, but in the same time, it could be um, lose the focus, like what you try to draw about that person, right? Mm. And here's another one. Again, you don't see eyes, nose, and mouth very clear, but in the same time, you feel that person's more. And so when we do the portrait, um, especially you're doing like more history, historicals, is like from photo, you do want it to um, think about soft edge and hard edges as well, rather than everything is all hard edges. So pick an eyes that is more important for you, rather than both eyes is all same equal de um, detail, or like same equal of the clearness. Okay? Got it. Yeah, well, I hope this is kind of helpful yeah, you, yeah. for your next drawing, and I can't wait to see the next drawing as well. Thank you for joining my workshop. If you are feeling stuck, or wonder what your next step are in your drawings. I have a free Inner Artist collaboration call that you can book with our team today. Whether you have been drawing for a few weeks or have been drawing for years, share your art journey with our team and receive my personal feedback on your drawings. When you book today, you will also receive drawing tips tailored to you on the call. Click below to book your free Inner Artist collaboration call now.